Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlenderDiplom.com and today I'd like to talk about the Build Modifier. Build Modifier is one of these modifiers that has very few options. However, you can do a lot of stuff with it that's actually not shown in these options. And that's what I want to focus on in this tutorial because those options are fairly self-explanatory. For example, the start frame, of course, tells us where the modifier starts and the length tells us how many frames it takes to build the entire house. So if I scrub through the timeline, you can see this modifier is animated by itself. And if you want to change the start frame, because at some point you realize the house needs to start building at a later time, you can do that. And you don't have to change both those values because it's not start and end frame, but it's start and length. Now, I did turn on the statistics over here. If I go into edit mode, you can see it's 135 faces. So if I put the length to 135, we should have exactly one face that's being added per frame. So there's our face, there's another one, there's another one, and so on. The reverse option, of course, just does the opposite. You start with the entire built house, and then you deconstruct it by scrubbing through the timeline. And the randomize option does what you would expect. It takes random faces and inserts them. And you can change the seed of the animation, which just means it takes a different random order every time you change the seed. So you can scrub through here and say, okay, this is the most important part. Here I want the most randomness. So I just click on some seeds until I like what I'm seeing. Now, if you start modeling from scratch using extrude and loop cuts and all of that stuff, which I did, and then leave your mesh alone, the order of the faces will look fairly randomized already. So you might ask yourself, why is there a randomized button? The reason for that being is you can sort the faces and they do start in a certain order. For example, if I insert Suzanne here and use a build modifier, you can see it's pretty ordered because Suzanne is being built by a script so that the faces she's being made of are in a pretty clear order. If I press randomized here, you can see the difference. It's now all over the place. So that's what the randomize button does. And it's very handy because if you start modeling and using loop cuts and so on, you get a very unpredictable order of faces. However, you can change that. And this is where it gets interesting. So if we go into the mesh options and sort the elements by view x axis, you might expect since we're not randomized, that the house is now being built from left to right. However, it's not. The reason being, if we are in edit mode and in vertex select, we're sorting the vertices. And the build modifier doesn't care about the vertices, it's only caring about the faces. So if I press three or click on this little icon, repeat that mesh sort elements in view X axis, go back out of edit mode, scrub through the timeline. You can see it's now being built from left to right. And you only have Z and X. If you use Z axis, that doesn't, that means it's not going along the global Z axis, which would have said global, but it's going away from the camera. So if I now go back into object mode, you can see it's being built from back to front because the Z axis in 3D is always the one where you're looking at the camera. The global Z axis is in Blender pointing up. So for example, we could now click down here with our cursor, go back into edit mode and again, go to mesh sorting elements and now choose cursor distance. Cursor distance means we start in this case at the bottom center face. And then from there out, we keep building the house in circles. And now if we press randomize, you can see there's a huge difference between the two orders. So if you have your model ready and you insert a couple of loop cuts here, that may or may not screw up the order of the elements. And you can see right here it's not doing what we wanted anymore. But it also shows you that at any point in time, you can go back 
and go back into mesh sort elements and then cursor distance and this is pretty much a trap pitfall since i inserted loop cuts it automatically jumped back into edge select mode so of course again if i want to sort elements i need to check which elements i'm sorting you can also uh, after pressing sort elements and choose cursor distance right now we sorted at the edges so the build modifier is not influenced by that at all but you can go into these options here and afterwards press faces again of course these options are gone once you go out of edit mode so you're gonna have to do that again and the easiest way to avoid that is just make sure you're in face select mode when you're sorting and go into the mesh sort elements by cursor distance and it has the same effect again we're now building from bottom to top if you want more control over your animation let me show you one last hack if i change this to a graph editor you can see we don't have any keyframes and still it's animating and that is something that's always struck me as odd i didn't really like that because right off the, out of the box we don't have the control over the speed of the modifier sure we can tell it how many frames it takes to build the entire house but we can say i want just one two three faces in the beginning and then add a lot of faces later on which we could if we had an interpolation curve and you can see in the graph editor even though my object is selected the modifier is active there is no keyframe we can sort of hack this though since one of the goals since blender 2.8 has been to make everything animatable so for example i don't want to go slower than one face per frame and then let's say at 186 we uh, turn this down to 50 press i to insert a keyframe and then uh, you can see here we have one face per frame and the further I go inside the timeline, you can see the more phases per frame are being created. If I play this back, we're already done at frame 117. And since it's a little hard to see with this setup, let's just go extreme and press play. And you can see now, there we go. That was the effect I was after. In the beginning we have one face per frame but very rapidly it gets faster and here we can see all of a sudden it's uh, pretty much gone and so that's basically a little hack on how to animate the build modifier and actually make the animation speed up or slow down it's a little hard to counteract the already existing animation because we don't have an animation speed here but we have an animation length so that's it about the build modifier. I hope you learned something today. And as always, thank you for watching. If you think you've learned something from this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of this kind, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in cycles whatsoever, please consider buying our book. It contains all the information about every node, as well as a lot of tips about performance, denoising, and so on.